What can listeners do yeah. to think about things a little bit more critically to cut through the noise? Yeah, it's such a good question. And I honestly think there are so many different answers. But the thing that's kind of coming to mind for me right now is the idea that one way to measure our mental toughness is how affected you become by things outside of your control. The less affected you are by things outside of your control, the more mentally tough you are. And so I think one good tool or uh, strategy that people can use to start to foster that ability to see to like to see the difference between those two things is I actually call it the, and I'm not the only person I know a lot of people have used this before, but it's called the circle of control. And you just take out a piece of paper and draw a circle in the middle of it. And in the middle of the circle, draw, write all the things within your control. And on the outside of that circle, write all the things outside of it and allow that to serve as just a visual representation of what's within your control and what's outside of reach. Because if at, in any given situation, if you can define those two things, you understand where your power lies and where it doesn't. It doesn't mean you can't give effort to things outside of your control, but your power is not going to be as effective as if you direct it to the things within it. And so I do think that if we can help people define those two things, we can make better choices, better decisions. And even, I would even go as far to say as from a journaling perspective, be able to become more aware of the things that we can and cannot do. It's uh it's the Jocko Willink approach of, ah, bad thing, good. It, yes. it's, it's how do you assess these things? I, I mean, the mechanism for me is is exposure to difficult endurance and physical challenges and events and things. And that's kind of the mechanism that I really buy into because it's it, it's within our control to put ourselves in situations out with our control. And I'm, I'm like a child looking forward to hallucinating 42 hours <laughs> with no sleep down at the end of the month, even though that scares the shit out of me. Yep. It, it's something that I know will make me the person I will be at the end is a different person at the start. And I think that's where I over the years have noticed when, for example, a car has a huge bill that you just have to deal with. It doesn't send me into an emotional spin where I catastrophize. It's just, okay, how do we make this work objectively? What conversations need to be had? What do we need to do? Move on, move on. And that's something that I attribute to repeated exposure to increasingly difficult things on my own terms. But I think, Mm -hmm. Something I'll push against a little back, push back a little bit against on is get comfortable being uncomfortable is a very popular narrative. It's become very cliched, even though it's very applicable. Yes. But I think the nuance is if, is if you can try and go looking for get uncomfortable being uncomfortable on somebody else's terms, I think is the level above that isn't necessarily as popularized on Twitter threads and Instagram posts as much as it might need to be because ice baths, good example. They're uncomfortable. You get into them. You you overcome that inertia of, I don't want to do this. You do it. Great. That's a win for the day. Move on. But if you're working at your desk, let's say, and somebody chucks you in an ice bath, how you react to that is going to be very different to how you do standing in a towel out your front door and then getting in for five minutes and then getting back in for a warm shower. So I think it's it's it, the question I often ask myself is how can I increase the dosage of things that are out with my control that I don't have control over to make me better at dealing with things like incidentals, the economy, government decisions that I disagree with, all these things that can really weigh on our minds quite heavy. And there are a lot of things that you see online weighing that that weigh quite heavy on the mind these days. It's chaos out there. So what do you think people should be aspiring to do? Are there any, are there any KPIs or any metrics that you recommend people try and work into their life to, to, to make forward progress in this so that they can actually monitor their progress with what's in the circle versus what's out? Yeah, really quick though, because what you said I thought was really interesting because it made me think of like, I, I travel quite a bit and where where there, where that applies to me is that whenever there's a delay or we have an issue with a plane or whatever that is, like that sucks. Like there's nothing worse than trying to get where you're trying to go and have something that you have zero control over be the thing that delays you from getting there. And I just got back from a trip and a friend of mine, she got stuck. Like she's traveling back to uh, Australia and she got stuck in Dallas for two extra days. She has a toddler. She didn't have a place to stay. It was like a whole thing. 
And I have actually now trained myself to the point where when that happens, I try to number one, seek the gift and I try to go, okay, I can't control this. So what can I control? I can always control the way that I look at it. I can always control how I reframe it. And it seems simple and it might seem cliche, but it actually changes your experience around it. And so when you can change your experience, you can change how you actually live on a day to day you know, playing field. And so I know that that stuff doesn't actually upset me as much as it used to. And so if I can find myself in a mood that is actually more consistent with with where I want to be, I can actually enjoy those moments, believe it or not. Or I actually just don't get totally taken down by them and just pissed off at the world because trust me, I have. And so that's how can I find my, put myself, whether it's my mood, whether it's the way that I look at something, whether it's my perspective, whether it's the energy that I feel more in a place where I want it to be, because that's how I would like to live my life every day, knowing that I'm going to have moments of, you know, where it doesn't align with that. That's what I'm after. And so even optimizing my perspective, my frameworks, because what we know is that the frame matters more than the picture itself. The way that you look at something actually matters more than the actual thing that's happening to you because your the way that you interpret your data actually changes how your body responds to that data. And so that's why I find that that's really important. So what you described to me is just another opportunity, but oftentimes opportunities are gift wrapped in frustration potentially pain, discomfort, um, fear. And so if we can look at those things as, oh, this is an opportunity to practice this skill. It's amazing how our brains could like try to meet it. 